Okay, I think last week we uh, obtained these, um, um, the solution for the differential equations, and I think it looks like this. Looks like this. And the other solution looks like this. So that's the solution. Now, the, the thing is with the solution that if you remember, these numbers here are the eigenvalues, right? So one of the eigenvalues was minus 1. The other one was 2. So you have two eigenvalues. So and you can see that if one of these eigenvalues is a positive number, this will go to infinity in any case. And one of them is negative, it will just go to 0. But this will dominate everything because even though as time goes to infinity this will go to zero this will go to infinity right so just by looking at the A matrix which, I, which in our case was um, I think this 4 minus 5 2 and minus 3 just by looking at where it looks like this, right? Just by looking at the A matrix, the eigenvalue of the A matrix, we can actually immediately say if the solution of this equation will go to infinity or not. Because if one of the eigenvalues is a positive eigenvalue, we know the solution will go to infinity, right? For sure. So if you had a bigger um, problem, uh, or a differential equation the way we had. You no, know, this was the differential equation we had. I had an example, and this was the differential equation. Right? This was the differential equation. So it was something like this v dot w dot is equal to this 4 minus 5, 2 and minus 3. And then you have u and w. So it's an initial value problem. So if this is the A matrix, just by looking at the eigenvalue of the A matrix, I can tell you immediately if one of these, or both of them, will go to infinity, the solution, or they will actually go to zero. You can, you can say that just by looking at the eigenvalue. So that's why the eigenvalue of the A matrix of such a problem is of such importance. Because if even one of them is a positive number, we know this is going to diverge. I mean, this problem is going to diverge, right? So what we usually do is we sometimes we like to plot these eigenvalues. Um, this is the real and this is the imaginary axis on the complex plane. So we say, for for instance, for this one, we say one is at minus. Uh, this is t here. Right? Min one is at minus one, and the other one is at plus two, right? And then we immediately say, oh, okay, um, because we have one eigenvalue at plus 2 and one eigenvalue at minus 1, just because of this one, we will have a system that will grow to infinity. Okay? So it will diverge. So all of the eigenvalues practically has to be on this side of the complex plane. Right? So this is very similar, if you recall, what you did probably in system dynamics, where you found the transfer function and then you found the um, the characteristic equation and found the roots of the characteristic equation, right? What you did with the characteristic equation was you were looking at the uh, roots of the characteristic equation and everything is negative, then you would say it is, po it is a stable thing. Everything is positive, it's a pos uh, it, it is, uh, if one of the roots is positive, you would say the system is unstable, right? Remember that in system dynamics, right? So this is very similar. And if you l go back to flight dynamics, and if you don't remember this, you can go back uh, on YouTube, and the lecture is on YouTube. You will see that I actually show that this solution of the A matrix and a solution of a characteristic equation is actually the same solution, which means what, when we look at the eigenvalues, we are actually looking at the roots of the 
characteristic equation of this linear system, right? So what you really want here in this problem is that you want all the eigenvalues on this side of the plane to have a stable system, okay? Even if you have one on this side, it will be an unstable system. And so how do you say that? You will get these numbers. Another thing you need to realize here is that as the numbers become larger, okay, the divergence or also the convergence becomes also larger or faster, right? So which means if this is not two, but it would be 200, you would see that as time goes to infinity, as time grows, this number will quickly grow to a larger number. So this will diverge very, very quickly, right? So as the eigenvalue moves on this side, on the real axis, you'll see that this will become larger very quickly, right? This will diverge a lot faster. So if you had two systems, one where the eigenvalue is closer to the, to the imaginary axis and the other one far away, you would say the system that, is, that has a root that is far away will diverge very quickly, okay? Vice versa, it's, it's the same on this side. See here you have a minus one. Imagine this to be minus 100t. What would you say? So basically a root that is on this side of the complex plane. That would go to zero or convert to zero a lot faster than a root that is, that is only minus one. So as the root becomes on the negative direction, the magnitude becomes larger, you could say that the convergence will become faster. So if it's on this side, it will, it will diverge faster. What, what happens if you come close to the imaginary axis? Well, if you're here, for instance, it would mean that the divergence will be rather slow because it's a small number. If you're here, you would conclude that the convergence will be rather small. Okay? It will converge to zero, but it will be rather small. So just by looking at the eigenvalues, we can say a lot about the behavior of this dynamic system. And this is a linear dynamic system. And that's why the eigenvalues of this matrix become quite important. The location of the eigenvalues of the system will become very important. You understand that? So any questions here? All right. So the next thing we want to look at is um, Okay, it's here. There are two definitions. One is the geometric multiplicity, and one is the algebraic multiplicity of eigenvalues. Algebraic multiplicity and geometric. Metric multiplicity. Okay. Now, think of the following. Let's say you have a two-dimensional system. Okay. Let's say you have a two-dimensional system like we had over here. Okay. Um, and you have an A matrix that's a two by two. Let's say you have something like this: four minus five, two, and minus three. Okay. So, a second-order system like this would typically have two eigenvectors, right? That's what we found. We found two eigenvalues: lambda one and lambda two. And we found two eigenvectors, right? x1 and x2 were the two eigenvectors that we found. It's a two-dimensional system, and this is what you would typically find. All right? So if you would plot this for a two-dimensional system, right? u and v, I guess I had, I, I'm sorry, v and w, we had v and w. I don't remember where the eigenvalues were, but you would have basically two vectors I'm just making this up now, x1 and x2, which define two eigenvectors that correspond to this A matrix, right? This is what you would typically have. And in each direction, you would have an associated eigenvalue. And remember what they mean. If this is the A matrix, it means A times x is equal to lambda times x. So it is a vector. If you multiply it with the A matrix, it will not change direction. 
it will only change the magnitude. How much will the magnitude change? The magnitude change will be in the order of lambda, right? So it will be a 1, 1, 1, something like that, right? Or it will, in this case, right? Or it will be a x2 is equal to lambda 2 x2, or it will look like this. So this x would not change direction, it will only change the magnitude in the order of this lambda 2. That's what it means. So for a typical two dimensional system like this, a matrix, you would have two eigenvalues and two eigenvectors, okay? So this is, this is, this is typical. Now, it might so happen that, it might so happen, it might so happen that a matrix A, matrix A, order, let's say two by two, just give it, just make it an example, make it a two by two, an A matrix, it might so happen, it might have the same eigenvalue two times, which, might, which means it might have lambda one is equal to, let's say, as an, let's make this an example, let's say the eigenvalue here is one, and the second eigenvalue is two. So you have, uh, I'm sorry, also one. So you have two eigenvalues of the same, uh, same uh, the same eigenvalues for this two-dimensional system. Here you had two different eigenvectors, uh, eigenvalues, but here you have the same eigenvalue. Now, this might mean two things. This might mean two things. One, it might mean that the A matrix, in fact, <coughs> The A matrix, in fact, might have only one eigenvector or two eigenvectors in the same direction. And therefore, you have lambda 1 is equal to lambda 2. And therefore, x1, the eigenvector, is equal to x2. Okay? Might either mean this, so it's only, there's only one vector that satisfies this condition. Or it might mean that. The A matrix has two vectors, two eigenvectors, regular like this one, but it just happens so that lambda 1 and lambda 2 turns out to be the same. Understand? Understand that? It might, be, it might mean either this or this. I mean, both of these situations might have the same eigenvalue, OK? Here you have, you have A, you have two, two eigenvalues, and both of them are the same. It might mean two things. Either there's only one eigenvalue, uh, I'm sorry, one eigenvector, and therefore you have obviously the same eigenvector, uh, eigenvalue again. Or you might have two eigenvectors. They might just have, it might just so happen that the two of them might have the same eigenvalue, okay? So this one is not any different from this. I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a A matrix with two eigenvectors. A matrix with two eigenvectors. It just so happens that in those directions, the eigenvalues are the same. Now, this is a little different. This one has only one eigenvector now, OK? So there's a, there's a problem here. Not really a problem, but it's a different matrix than what we are used to. Typically, a two-dimensional uh, matrix has two eigenvectors, two independent eigenvectors. A three-dimensional will have three eigenvectors, right? A four-dimensional will have four eigenvectors. But if it so happens that they are on the same direction, those two eigenvectors, we say it has only one eigenvector, which is a little different from what we are used to, okay? But they have, and therefore, they will have the same eigenvector. Now, this situation, this situation is a little different, okay? Although you have the same eigenvalue two times, okay? And that's how we distinguish between algebraic multiplicity and geometric multiplicity, okay? Now, algebraic multiplicity is basically, we have a definition over there, the multiplicity as the root of the characteristic equation of an eigenvalue is called its algebraic multiplicity. Basically, here, the algebraic multiplicity of the eigenvalue one would be two because it appears two times, okay? How many times does it appear? It appears two times, okay? But geometrically, 
This case and this case will be now different, okay? We would say, how many eigenvalues does this correspond to? Corresponds to one. So the geometric multiplicity, geometrically, if you look at it, it's really one, okay? It, they show only, they point only in one direction for this one. Ge algebraically, two. Geometrically, one. In this case, they point in the two different directions. So I would call the geometric multiplicity two and the algebraic multiplicity also two. Here's a definition for the geometric multiplicity. The maximum number of eigenvectors associated with that eigenvalue is called ge the geometric multiplicity. Okay? So, what I'm trying to say is this. What I'm trying to say is this. Let's say I have an A matrix and let's say this is a 3 by 3. Okay? And I've looked at the eigenvalues. The eigenvalues are like this. Lambda 1 is equal to lambda 2 and lambda 3 and it's equal to 5. I'm just making this up now. Okay? And let's say there's only one eigenvector for this and that is pointing to 3, 1, 3. I don't know. Making this up again. Okay? And all of the, it is only one, has only, has only one eigenvector. Or three eigenvectors pointing in the same direction. It's the same thing. All right? So it is only one eigenvector. So basically, I mean now it's a three-dimensional system, of course. You have one eigenvector, x1, and you have three eigenvalues, of course, but they are all in the same direction. All right? So I would say the algebraic multiplicity is how many? Three. three. Geometric multiplicity? One. OK. And this is the geometric multiplicity. Okay, so let's give the same example here. I'll give another example. Well, this one and this one maybe two. Let's say you have again a three by three A matrix, and lambda one is equal to lambda two is equal to lambda three is equal to five. Okay, so let's just say x one. It has two eigenvalues. One is this, and it has another eigenvalue that is. 2, 0, 5, I don't know, making this up. And let's say this is also equal to x3. So x3 is equal to x2 is equal to this. So it has really two eigenvectors, right? It's a three-dimensional matrix, but it has really only two independent eigenvectors, right? I mean, they, they point in the same direction, so I, they don't qualify as a different eigenvector. Two independent eigenvectors. However, you have three eigenvalues, okay? So what does it mean? It means the following. It means you have, now I'm you know, not plotting this right, but you have two independent eigenvalues, eigenvectors, I'm sorry, okay? So the five is pointing in this direction, and this one is also pointing at five, but you really have two eigenvectors pointing in the same direction, okay? So if you look at this and this, it looks like the same problem. You have the same eigen uh, matrix, a three-dimensional matrix, and the eigenvalues here are three times repeated, and here it's also three times repeated. But they are very different problems, you see? Because this one has only one eigenvector, and all three point in the same direction. This one, though it's a three-dimensional problem, it has two eigenvectors. And the five, one belongs to this one here. And the other two belong to these ones because they point in the same direction. So how many times does the eigenvalue number five, eigenvalue five, repeat itself? Three times. So algebraically, the multiplicity is three. So algebraic multiplicity for this one Multiplicity, okay, is what? Five. 
right? I'm sorry, three of course. <laughs> it repeats itself three times, okay? How many times does it repeat itself in terms of eigenvectors? How many independent eigenvectors is this five associated with? Two. So the geometric multiplicity is two, okay? Geometric multiplicity. is two. So why is this important? Why is this important? See, whenever you have the same eigenvalues somewhere, it might mean something very normal, like this one, meaning that you have two eigenvectors, it just happens so that they have the same eigenvalue, or it might mean something not so normal, which means a two-dimensional system has only one eigenvector, or a three-dimensional system has only two eigenvectors. So that is not a typical matrix that we see, right? So how do we distinguish between them? We distinguish between the algebraic multiplicity and the geometric multiplicity, okay? So let's say I had three eigenvectors. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, the eigenvalue, three of them, five. And you would have three eigenvectors pointing. There would be nothing wrong with this matrix because it has still eigen, three eigenvectors. It just ha so happens that they have three, the eigenvalues turn out to be the same. So the geometric multiplicity would be three. The algebraic multiplicity would be three. So things would be okay, All right? But it might also so happen that you have three fives, three eigenvalues, but they all point in the same direction. Then the geometric multiplicity is one and the algebraic is three. So immediately say, well, there's something wrong with this matrix. Not wrong, but it's different. The matrix is a little different, right? It is not what we are used to, at least, because we are used to having three eigenvectors in a three-dimensional matrix, okay? So this is how we distinguish between how many eigenvalues, how many times the eigenvalue repeats itself, and how many eigenvectors are associated with this. So it is very different from an eigenvalue repeating itself and what this repetition of the eigenvalue actually means. It might mean, again, I'm repeating this many times, I know, and I know in YouTube it's going to look bad because I'm saying the same thing a few times, but you have to understand this. When you have a repetition of the eigenvalues, doesn't necessarily mean that you have only one eigenvector pointing all in the same direction. It might so happen that there are all, you have two, three independent eigenvalues. It just so happens that the associated eigenvalues are the same. Okay, yes, please. So, uh, what if we have uh, four eigenvalues, but if two are same with each other, and two yeah. are, so will we have like four uh, algebraic uh, multiple yeah. two? I will have a few examples. That's a good, good, good question. Let's just go through these examples over here. I have an example for that. So, this is an identity matrix, one, 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 right? And therefore you have three eigenvalues which are equal to one and the algebraic multiplicity is equal, obviously equal to three. The maximum number of eigenvectors associated with that eigenvalue is called the geometric multiplicity. So, for the same example for the identity matrix, though you have one, 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 as the three eigenvalues, you will have three different eigenvectors. Therefore, the geometric multiplicity of the eigenvalue equal to one is actually three, because geometrically, you have three eigenvectors, right? So each of these belong to one eigenvector, okay? So this is, this is that. Now, let's, let's give another example to exactly what you said. The problem might be a little bit more complex, right? You might have something like this. You might say the A matrix is uh, 5 by 5, okay? And let's say the eigenvalue, you might have the first one, let's say is 5. The second one and the third one is the same and they are 2. I'm just making this up, right? Another example. And 4 and 5 might, have an, uh, might be the eigenvalue, and let's say this is 3, okay? Now, this one, 
will probably have one eigenvector associated with it, right? So let's say this, is, this has one eigenvector associated with it. This one here, let's say, has two eigenvalues associated with it. Okay? And let's say this one here has only one eigenvalue associated with it. So this is a five-dimensional system, so I can't really plot it, but you have to imagine this having five vectors. Okay? And one of them has the eigenvalue, which is five. You have a second one and a third one, and both of them have eigenvalues two. And this one is a one vector, and it has repeats itself three times. Basically, number four and five are the same. You can also say this, right? The fourth and the fifth eigenvector is in the same direction. Okay? And therefore, it repeats itself two times. Okay, so let's start with the algebraic multiplicity. <coughs> what is the algebraic multiplicity of this one? One. It repeats itself only one. Let me make a little table here. Algebraic multiplicity for this one is one. It repeats itself only once. This algebraic multiplicity is two. Algebraic multiplicity, two. It repeats itself two times. Okay? Geometric has one eigenvalue, therefore one, right? This one, two different, therefore two. This one, one. Okay, perfect. Okay? So the algebraic geometric is the same means that I have an eigenvalue, you know, this one. You have two algebraic and two geometric, so this is fine too because I have two eigenvectors in two directions. This one is a little different now because I have the eigenvector repeat itself two times, but the algebraic multiplicity is two times, okay? So how many independent eigenvalues do I have? I have three independent eigenvalues, it looks like. How about eigenvectors? I have how many eigenvectors for this matrix? Four, four eigenvectors. How many would you assume you would have? Five, but you don't, you have only four. Can you get this information just by looking at these numbers? How many eigenvectors do I, eigenvalues do I have? Three eigenvalues. Because you have three eigenvalues doesn't mean you have three eigenvectors, right? No way. In fact, you have three eigenvalues, four eigenvectors. And they are repeating itself. This is repeating itself too. But it's quite funny because the, this repetition doesn't mean anything. You still have two independent eigenvectors. But this means something because it means that these two eigenvectors point in the same direction. And that's why you have only four eigenvectors. And in control theory, if you go to modern control, this actually means something, which means you can do something or you can do something, you can't do something with this problem. Okay? If the A matrix turns out to be something like this, you might or might not do something or, you know, it will mean something. Do you understand the difference? Okay, very fundamental. All right, very, very fundamental stuff. Okay, next thing I want to quickly start at least is what we call similarity. Okay, similarity. Matrices can be similar to each other. Okay, matrix similarity. of matrices. Do you have any question here? All right. Similarity of matrices. Here's an interesting thing. Let A and B square matrices of the same order. Okay? <coughs> a is a squ square matrix, B is a square matrix, and they have the same order. Then A is similar to B if there is a non-singular matrix P for which this, this holds, what is it? It's B is equal to P over minus one, A times P. Okay, what does it mean? P must be non-singular. Singular means 
you can't invert the matrix, right? Right? A singular matrix is not invertible, remember? So that means P cannot be singular because you need the inversion of it, right? P cannot be singular because there is the inverse, all right? So what does it mean? If you look at this, you know, if this was not a matrix, if this was just a scalar equation, what would you say? A scalar equation would look like this. B is equal to, let's make it a scalar equation, B is equal to P over minus 1, A times P. And let's say all of these are uh, scalar numbers or real numbers, right? What would, what would happen? You would immediately do this and A would be equal to B, right? Obviously. Well, you can't, you, you, you can't do it here, but it's, it still means that there's something similar about these matrices because you're multiplying this matrix with P and then with the inverse P and you get another matrix but there must be something that is similar to A and B if you can do this, okay? And what's funny is that the eigenvalues of A and B, for instance, will be the same, although they are very different matrices. The numbers of A and B will be very different. If you look at them, you can't tell, right? They are two different matrices. However, the eigenvalues will always be the same if you can do this. And the eigenvectors, they will always have a relation you will see in a minute, okay? And, it, and if you can do this, if you can do this, if a P matrix like this exists in first place, we call A and B similar matrices. They are similar to each other, okay? So that's the whole idea. All right, so note that this is a symmetric relation since you can also do this, which means you can actually reverse the problem and say A is equal to Q over minus 1 times B times Q. <coughs> because you can obviously move this P to the other side, but it will be just an inverse. And let me just call this Q now, where Q is equal to P over minus 1. Okay? So it goes both ways. So, if P over minus 1 AP, then A and B have the same eigenvalue. An eigenvector X of A corresponds to an eigenvector P over minus 1 times X of B. So if you can do this, eigenvalues are the same, are same. And it also means that the eigenvector of A corresponds to P over minus 1 times X, which will be the eigenvector of B. Eigenvector of B. Okay? If X is the eigenvector of A. Now, why is this, why is this meaningful for us? I and mean, why where, why would this be useful, okay? Here is why it's useful. Remember the problem I had at the beginning of the class. The A matrix, everything really depends on the eigenvalue if it diverges or converges, right? It's really the eigenvalue. If the eigenvalue is a positive number, one of the eigenvalues, we say the problem diverges. Now, imagine you can transform this A matrix into some other matrix that might be useful in some other ways, but still maintain the same eigenvalues. Well, it, it seems like you can transform these problems into some different problems and they will still have the same eigenvalue and all that matters is the eigenvalue in stability, right, in these in this, in this problems. So you would be able to transform one of these matrices to something more useful, whatever that usefulness will be, into something more useful but still retain the eigenvalues of the A matrix. Okay, so transforming a matrix into a similar matrix ma could make life easier. I'm not saying it will always make life easier, it could make life easier because it will be a different problem, a different matrix that is similar to what you use but it will have eigenvalues of the same problem. And eigenvalues in our thing 
you know, what we are trying to do in, in, in controls with the stability and diverse, divergence and convergence is really, I'm not going to say everything, but most of it. Okay? So therefore, this could be a very useful thing to do. Transforming things from one to another where the eigenvalues are retained. Okay? Good. I think I have to stop here. I hate to stop, but I have to stop.